Hi guys, I'm Ashley. I'm one of the counseling interns at the Wellness Center. So I just wanted to create a video for you guys with some tips on how to make sure you're still having a meaningful and day that feels purposeful, even in the midst of all that's going on right now and being at home. So the first and the biggest thing is creating some type of a schedule. Um, I'm sure this is something you've heard before. So I just want to talk a little bit a little bit about it. So the first thing is really, you know, how structured should your schedule really be? And I think that de depends on who it is. So for some people, they might really need a heavily structured schedule that goes hour by hour and each thing is really, you know, you're making sure you know what you're doing at each point during the day. Um, and this could be really great to keep yourself accountable, but some people might feel like that's a little too much and they might be okay with just having some bullet points of, you know, this is some things I wanna get done today and that's fine by them. So I think the biggest thing here is noticing if you're someone who tends to just have some bullet points, um, you noticing, are you actually getting those things done? Are you spending way too much time just kind of relaxing and watching TV? So in that case, you may be saying, all right, this isn't working. Maybe I need to have more of a structured schedule. Maybe I need to actually uh, fit in relaxation time in so that I know I'm not doing too much or too little of it. So here I'm going to list some things that can be really helpful to make sure you're doing each day. So the first thing is, it's very simple, is just either taking a shower or even just changing your clothes. And this is really important because our behavior plays a huge impact on our mindset and on our mood. So even something as small as getting changed, it's sending that message to your brain that, you know, you're getting up and you're going and you're, you're getting ready. Um, and it's also telling yourself that you are taking care of yourself. So the next thing is going outside for at least 30 minutes. You know, it's a change of scenery. So you're not just staring at the same walls all day long. Um, and going out in nature has been proven to reduce anxiety brooding and stress, and has also been shown to increase our attention capacity, create it, creativity, happiness, and even our ability to connect with others. So it's, it's really important. It's something we all have access to right now. So the next thing is having some type of exercise or movement. I'm sure most of us are not used to being inside for this long. So being able to have that in your schedule where you know, okay, today I need to get at least a half hour where I'm moving my body. Maybe that's finding a workout video on YouTube or going outside for a walk. So the next thing is having a social call or some form of interaction with someone for at least 30 minutes a day. And this is really important because as humans, we are wired for human connection. And obviously, in this time right now, that is something that is very much limited. So being able to be creative and, you know, setting up FaceTime calls. Um, you know, I've seen people do things like having a video dinner with a group of friends or even doing like an interactive game night. Those are really great ways to still get that social connection. The next one is having some type of creative outlet. This is really great for tapping into other areas of your brain. Um, so this could be things like cooking, uh, doing some type of online class, learning something new. Again, YouTube, so much is on YouTube. You can learn so much from there. Um, or even something like creating a YouTube video that's a little more non-traditional, but something that is more traditional, you know, of course you could do painting, drawing, all those classic art things. 
So the next is having some type of a long-term project. Right now we might find ourselves just trying to do something to pass the time. So having a long-term project, it's you know having something to, that you're striving for and creating more of that purpose. So this could be something like organizing your closet, especially if it's very messy, it might take a few days to do that. Um, having a long-term art project that you, you come back to, you work on every few days, um, even learning a language. So obviously I have a few things to put into your day, so I don't think it, you know, you'll be able to fit all of those in every day, but if you can pick out three or four that you are doing, that's going to be really helpful in making sure you're feeling like you're actually doing something with your day. So this next section is just going to be some other tips to keep in mind. So the first one is to make sure you're eating well. Um, I know a lot of people are stocking up on some quarantine snacks, you know, myself included. Um, and remembering that if we just sit and eat snacks all day long for weeks, it's really going to play a toll on our health. We're going to feel sluggish. We're going to have a loss of energy, and that's going to impact our mood. So being able to, to eat healthier, um, it's really going to make you feel better about yourself. So the next one is limiting exposure to media. Um, I think we're all aware that you can jump on anything. You can jump on social media, you can turn on the news, and you're bombarded with information about the virus. While it is good to be you know, knowledgeable and updated on what's going on if you're doing it so much or so frequently throughout the day that you feel overwhelmed, you know, that's obviously not very helpful. So, you know, you can, you can notice for yourself, like, does this feel helpful for me? Does it not? And maybe that's something you can add into your schedule. You know, I'm only going to check the news once today or twice. Um, and a good source for that is the governor puts out a press conference every day. So maybe that's your one source and you know it's it's uh, accurate. So this next one is having a space to be alone. And this is because for a lot of us, we're probably at home with the same people. And while it is important to connect with them, it's also you know, we're not going to be able to spend every second with them. We're going to all need our alone time at some point. So being able to have a space that you feel like you can go and have that time alone is going to be really important for you and the other members in your family. And I also want to acknowledge on the flip side of this, the flip side is that some people are probably on their own right now. You know, so they have the opposite of this issue where they probably are needing more interaction. So knowing that for yourself, maybe you need to schedule more face on calls with people um, and try to be creative with what you can do. So the next thing is, this is just like a little tip if you know, you're feeling a lot of stress that something that could be really helpful is repetitive motions. This can be things like painting, you know, that repetitive brush, brush stroke, um, knitting. I don't know how many people knit, but it's, it's just an example. Um, even things like walking on a treadmill, um, anything that has that, that uh, repetitive motion to it is very calming. So that's something you can just keep in the back of your mind. So this next one is just understanding that other people handle stress in different ways. Um, for some people, maybe when they're stressed, they keep more to themselves. So being able to notice, you know, if a friend hasn't reached out to you, it may not be that they don't want to talk to you. It might just be that they're overwhelmed and not taking that personally um, and being able to acknowledge, okay, maybe I need to give them a little space right now, or even like you can take it upon yourself to reach out to them. Um, along with this, noticing if people in your house are maybe feeling a little irritable to, you know, maybe have a conversation with them about that. Ask them how they are. Maybe they need some space. Maybe they just need someone 
to talk to because they're feeling stressed out. You know, really understanding that this is a time that none of us have been through before and we're all reacting to it in different ways and being able to come together and lean on each other and being able to communicate is really gonna help with that. So this next one is chunking up your time. So we, as humans, we might want to, you know, think ahead to what's happening next week, next month. We might be worrying about those things, but the fact of the matter is we need to focus on what we're doing presently. Um, and along with that, it's recognizing what you can and can't control. You know, you have control over this present moment. Um, and also remembering that you, know, you don't have control over what's going on in the world right now, but you have control over yourself, how you're spending your time. You have control over creating a schedule for yourself so that you can make the most out of the situation and have the most normalcy and purpose that you can. So I think pretty much like the take home message from this is to really be aware of how you're spending your time and how that is impacting you so that you can then, you know, do something with that information, do the things that make you happy, um, make sure you're doing the things you need to get to done, making sure that you are taking time to relax, that you're not pushing yourself to be overly productive, you know, finding that balance in between everything. Um, so I hope you found this video informative. Um, stay tuned on our social media for other things that we'll be providing for you guys, and I hope you stay well during this time.